Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about spools and the scourge that they are on the environment and what we can do about it. Stay tuned. So, one thing everybody who's involved with 3D printing knows is that this is a spool of filament. One kilogram of plastic, well, a little less now I've been printing with it. But, um, um, by the way, this is a new Pearl Starlight Blue from Maker Geeks. Gorgeous. This and the Poison Ivy came in the Geek Box this month. Oh, love these colors. I'm going to be ordering more of these if they'll send them. <laughs> but, um, here's the problem with 3D printing and spools. I mean, we know about the plastic waste from what do we do with our prints when we're done. We'll, we'll assume we'll be conscientious of that, but we have another problem. When you're done printing, you have one of these, an empty spool. What do you do about it? <laughs> There's a lot of them. I mean, I've printed hundreds of these. I've thrown away hundreds of these over the last two years. So, there are solutions people are working on. Richard Horn, I believe in the UK, um, he's known as Rich Wrap. He has designed something called the Master Spool. And the Master Spool solves this problem in two different ways. So, the idea of the master spool is that you print your own spool. And you say, well, how does that solve anything? Well, then the manufacturer can just send you this. Instead of sending you this. That has several advantages. One is cheaper, so shipping is cheaper. They can now send more filament at that under one kilogram special rate. Because a kilogram of filament is actually like 1.3 kilograms. Because you got the kilogram of filament, and then you got like the 200 grams of the spool, and then the packaging, and all that crap, and it comes out to like 1.3. This allows manufacturers to send like eight or 900 grams of filament and still be under the one kilogram magic number that allows them to ship filament around the world a lot cheaper. Okay, so it's good for manufacturers too. Manufacturers should adopt this. And it gets rid of this. So you don't have this when you're done. Okay, so at, on your printer at home, you print out the master spool. It's two different halves, you print them out, and the idea is, I can't actually do this, I'll get more into it later, but you would load this onto the spool through these holes here. You would, uh, after you assemble it, you would cut the zip ties. There's traps for the film on the inside, and there are traps for the filament on the outside so that your filament's not running loose and free. And then you, would, through these holes, snip the zip ties off, and you would end up with a ready-to-go spool of film. You load it into your printer. When you're done, you unspool, unscrew this, load the next reload in, to start printing again. This also has another way of solving our problem. This one here is interesting. There's a company called Philobot, and they have two different plastics they're working on. One, the little flexi rex I showed you before. I show you. Recycled ABS. They actually took these ABS spools, chewed them up in a grinder, and made filament out of it. So now, not only do we recycle, not send out spool after spool with new rolls, because we have one of these, but you can even print your master spool from recycled spools, or recycled prints. You can take recycling, they take PLA. This is recycled PLA from Philobot. So now we are reducing how many of these are created, and we can even reuse what was created to make new ones. That's pretty cool. But Master Spool has a serious problem, and this will make or break Master Spool. Um, first of all, I'd like Rich not to be forgotten as the one who actually did something about this. You know, more than just said, hey, let's recycle. No, he actually did something. He made a spool. But it has to be standardized. If it's not standardized, then we're back to the same damn problem we had before. I have to print out six different ones of these for the six different manufacturers I order from because they have six different refillable spools. That's stupid. I hope manufacturers will recognize the silliness of that. Okay? You don't have to all use a master spool, but we should all use the same specifications. See, I bought this on Amazon. It's a very nicely wound up spool of reloadable filament. And it has a pretty serious problem. It doesn't fit on the damn master spool. Which means this company obviously intended this for some custom spool they designed. Okay? Well, now I have to go print their spool. 
<laughs> That's crazy. It's employ your manufacturers even if you don't want to use a master spool if you want to make your own spool that's fine but operate under the same hub diameter and roll width measurements as the master spool so that all these different designs will all be compatible with each other all right you want to do this instead of zip ties that's fine because if i load this into a spool i can just have i can just turn this until i get to each one of these and cut them off it'll still work right it doesn't have to be zip ties but this and this needs to be the same across the line see this one here it's too wide so they made their hub smaller and they made their spool wider it, it's this this violates both dimensions and if we don't standardize on one single hub and width, then we're going to be printing 30 different spools for 30 different conditions that the manufacturers create with their refills. The refills only make sense when we all have the same standardization for size. So please, employ your manufacturers. Manufacturers who are watching this, please. Let's all pick one standard. I suggest the master spool standard, not the master spool. If you don't want, if you want to make your own spool, make your own spool. But do the same hub diameter and spool width, so that all of our spools are cross compatible. So if someone likes this particular spool, they can print out four or five of those spools. But if they buy the spool from the guy who is master spool compliant, it'll still fit their spool. And if I buy the spool from people who like this X Y Z spool, it'll still fit my master spool. All right, or if I want to design my own custom spool, if I want to make a Narisa's Today's 3D Print Cool Wicked Awesome Spool, which I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to design my own spool, um, a beefed up version of this. I'm going to make the, um, the hub five millimeters bigger, and I'm going to make the walls here flat, smooth, and I'm going to make them about this thick. And then I'm going to have handles screw into it so that I can roll my own spools. And I'm going to make the wall solid and the hub bigger so that I don't run into this problem. See, I actually rolled this spool on this master spool and the problem is because I wound it on there relatively tight, I can't get it back on. <laughs> because once I popped it off, it went just a little bit and so it won't go back in. I could I, I could probably finagle it with some shims and eventually get it back on there, but it kind of defeats the point. So I need to, as a temporary solution, I can just put some cardboard inside here before I roll it. This way I have a sleeve and that'll give me that little extra tolerance I need. But I'm just going to custom design a spool around the master spool that's beefier because I only need one. Um, and that's handles. So I can put my two and a half, five kilogram roll on the ground here, hook my handles up to my, my call it my master re-spooler. <laughs> and then just sit here and just go ch -ch 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 and, and roll the thing up instead of having to sit here and do this the next 30 minutes as I wind the filament on the spool like I did with this. Um, but we need to standardize so that when we all do this cool crazy stuff they're all interchangeable. They all fit. All right, So this would fit on this spool but this won't fit on this spool. All right, So standardize across the board. So let's get into the other spools that I made. This is something I made. It's nothing about recycling or anything. It's just actually it's a waste, but huh, it's it's a pain in the butt for me. So I love my maker box. And I get my samples in my maker box, but it is such a pain to load these things. So I thought, hey, I'll do it. Rich wrapped it. I'll make a spool for it. So the first iter well, this is the final version of the first iteration of the spool I came up with. This is on Thingiverse, not this one, the new one. But um it, it's problematic. Sometimes this would jump over the edge. That's why these walls are taller, um, etc. And I made my little inserts here. They are not quite good enough. The filament tends to get um, to split it. So I had to go through a couple of revisions and I finally came up with this design. Now this design is cool because it uses less plastic and the reason I redesigned this to begin with is I found out that this doesn't fit over my nut on my spool holder. It fits over the shaft, but not the nut, so I gotta unscrew the nut to put it on. I was like, screw that. So I made that. And you can see, I went through quite a number of... No idea why it just stopped. It just stopped. <laughs> so I went through quite a number of revisions trying to figure out, you know, get everything fine-tuned, and I thought I had it right. I printed off a whole bunch of them, and I realized a real problem. These shock points 
to make this easier to print, I cut them off, made them square um, threads instead of pointy threads. So instead of each thread coming to a point, they came to a square. And that makes the tolerances much better, and it's also easy to print, because the overhangs no longer require any sort of supports. And I ran into one pretty serious problem. On this one, I corrected it. On the other ones, however, yeah, actually this was a good one, I can keep it, no, yeah, that one comes out too, yeah. see, they just fit together, the teeth don't actually engage, yeah, so, that's a problem, <laughs> what I ended up having to do was to scale this cylinder out on X and Y without scaling on Z, just a tiny bit, I think it was like 3 millimeters is all I needed, and after that, you know, it's a loose fit, so lots of tolerance here, so you can see this is a real jiggly fit, but once you tighten down, it's a nice snug fit, no jiggling. That means you don't have to worry about tolerances on your printer, it's going to print fine. I would advise leaning toward the under extrude side, because otherwise your traps will become difficult to use. And um, you don't want that. So, let's load one. It's, it's pretty darn easy, it works just like a master spool. You take your MakerBox sample. Now this doesn't always work sometimes these MakerBot samples aren't the cleanest as far as um, how they're wound and if there's any kind of um, overlap in their winding it's going to be a problem but this one happens to look pretty good so you take it and you insert the filament into your trap on the hub you lay the filament on the hub get down there and then you insert your filament into one of your outside traps. Not all of them on this one are clean. This is one of my earlier models. There we go. I've enlarged them a bit on the latest model. And now your filament just sits there. And you screw in the other half of your spool. Making sure you didn't trap anything. And there you go. You now have a MakerBox sample spool ready to go, fully trapped out. And I did that for a whole bunch of them. So here's all my samples from the last couple of, well this is the last maker box, and it's that Xenomorph green, I can't wait to try that. The linen was awesome, it breaks very easily, it's stringy and hairy, but man the prints look cool. I hope they can figure out the issues with the linen filament, because I really like it. And that's it, it's pretty cool. Um, talk to your manufacturers about Master Spool. Tell them you'd like to see refills and tell them to, even if they want to make their own spool, especially the manufacturers who are making refillable spools, standardize. Please standardize so that all the spools, even if they look different, will accept each other's refills. That's critical to eliminating all this waste in our hobby and industry. So that's it. You guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.